Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, 12 rounds of boxing for the WBO Interim Heavyweight Championship of the World! Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, the challenger, wearing red, white, and gold. Official weight, 247.6 pounds. His professional record, an excellent one. 37 fights, 34 victories, including 23 big wins by knockout with three defeats. From South Auckland and New Zealand, the WBO, former WBO heavyweight champion of the world, Lupe Soliai La Ole Ole Moliatoa, a.k.a. Big Jose. And across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, wearing gold and black, and officially weighing in at 291.6 pounds. This Olympic silver medalist, now as a professional, has 28 fights with 26 victories, including 21 wins by knockout. Only one defeat with one draw from Choco, China, and New Jersey in the United States the reigning and defending WBO interim heavyweight champion of the world, Big Bang Jang Jilin! Right, lads, you both know the rules, so let's just have a good, clean fight, OK? Most of all, remember to defend yourselves at all times, all right? Just close. Keep it. Michael Alexander, the referee. That's an interesting split. Almost exactly 50 50. 50% Jang, 49% Parker. He was at home going for different methods for the two, but it is that kind of a fight. Gilet Zhang, the big bang in the gold and black there in that Southport left handed stance. Joe Parker also in black and gold with that skirt like design with the black gloves. Just touching lead hands at the minute, nobody really wanting to commit so far in this opening minute. Parker just reaching for that right hand to the body, didn't quite land it. Shan lets that left hand go, nice and loose. Parker saw it coming, slipped off to his left. Size of Jang just cut such an imposing figure. Doesn't have to do a lot, but straight away you see the position he took in the ring. Parker with the right hand, Jang Lo steps in with the left to the body. Parker's right hand just about got there. Jang was just pulling back. Yeah, Jang just kind of manoeuvring Parker into the positions he wants him in without over committing there's pressure on him with that front foot his presence make him part of feel under pressure he's pushing out that jab jang holding the center of the ring he's finding a home with that jab as well
leading off of the hook there, Parker, but he tucked up behind the shoulder. Effectively, there, Zhang. Final few seconds of what has been a very cagey opening round. Round two. It was a cagey opener, really, for both men. Um, Zhang trying to just manoeuvre Parker into positions, and Parker just, you know, trying to settle in, trying to get some range, tried a few body shots, but didn't really land anything. Zhang looking for the backhand left hook there. Through that left hand, it was caught by the gloves of Parker. These two did box at the World Amateur Championships back in 2011 in Baku. Zhang got the win, neither one of them sets any store in that at all. They barely even mentioned it in the build-up, but there is a little bit of history there. Parker looking to try and land that jab. Quite a lot of shaping from the pair of them. Similar to the first round, this one so far. Parker thrown that right hand from quite a long way out. He used that shot against Deontay Wilder, threw it against Wilder from even further out, then dipped, followed it in, and ended up with his head on Wilder's hip almost at times. It made it an impossible shot to counter, really. So Parker's got the quicker feet, so he can get into a position where he needs to to set his feet to throw the punch, or even punch on the move like he did with that right hook, where Zhang knows he doesn't. He needs to get into position before he can throw those punches. But Parker found himself backed up to the corner and knew that wasn't where he wanted to be. Zhang was maybe a little bit slow to let those hands go as Parker slid off to his right. He, he was right hit him with the left. But you could see the weight of the right hook that landed. I mean, it was a cuffing shot. It knocked him off balance, but you could see the weight of it. Zhang's just looking to keep his feet in range and trying to keep Parker moving. He doesn't want to be working too hard because he knows, you know, his, his gas tank's not the best in the world and at his age it's not going to be. But while he can keep at this pace and just pick and pull, it'll suit him a lot more because he'll want to look land the heavier shots. Parker will be the sharper of the puncher. Parker got through with a nice jab a few seconds ago. Zhang with a, a left hand into the body. Yeah, Zhang, 20 stone, doesn't want to be running all around the no. ring. And this is where, where Parker needs it to be. More in the centre of the circle, centre of the ring, he can circle him, keep his back off of them ropes, gives him his exits. Throwing that right hand from the outside again there, just trying to find that distance with it. He knows he needs to get it absolutely right, Joseph Parker. Just pecking with the lead hand there, Zhang. Andy Lee with the advice, he's happy enough with the way that those first two rounds have gone. Yeah, they're, they're in for the long haul. This is a long fight for them, so they're just trying to drain um, Zhang without falling, you know, get, and not falling too far behind on the cards. Which they've got to give themselves a mountain climb, but, you know, one apiece. They're more than happy with that. Lots of feints, lots of little steps across. Keep him turning, keep him upset, and keep him having to reset. That's going to, it's all energy sapping. You know, and like you say, when you're that big, like Zhang, you know, he's trying to conserve as much energy as possible. Andy Lee just making the point to Parker that he doesn't want to be pulling back in straight lines. He needs to step off to the side, get off that punching line. Looks for the right hand there, Parker. Smothered by Zhang, a right hand into the body. Parker's a good body puncher, and then those body shots are going to take the steam out of Zhang even more. And that's why it's important early doors. It doesn't get caught in him big while Zhang's fresh. Just sat down on the right hand a little bit more there, Parker, as well. Zhang, though, just trying to back him into the corner and tee up that left. Got the touch over eager, maybe, and shut down his own space slightly. He didn't quite have room for it in the end. 
What Parker can't afford to do is get static. Can't afford to stand in front of Zhang. Look, there's going to be moments when that happens and then he wants to get his shots off and then move again. He doesn't want to stay there too long, because otherwise Zhang is going to pin him and, and land some big shots. You can, you know, we can hear the weight of the shots yeah. here. And what he doesn't want to do as well is allow Zhang to, to lean on him and pull, it, pull his head down, because that, again, zaps you. And he's already a couple of times in this round that's happened. Just throwing a few feints here, Parker. Yeah, lots Can't of feints, find them. lots of feints, lots of head movement. And you know, it's when he was faint and then Zhang starts taking the steps back. Oh, oh. left hand there, straight down the middle from Zhang and Three, Parker not onto his backside. Five, six, He's okay though, Parker. Seven, it was just it was a good eight. shot, accurate shot, but he's okay. It caught him a little bit square, I think as he was standing off and it may be travelled a bit further than he thought it would. As soon as he landed, he looked at the corner, he was up on five, but that is just an example of the power and the timing of Gilles Zhang because he just slid that left hand out, Dave. Total economy of effort, and that's what he can do. Yeah, just placed it. He's got very good timing on Zhang. Now, the important thing is that Parker doesn't take anything now. He doesn't take any more punishment. He doesn't allow himself to get leaned on and to be brought to be mauled like this. Yeah, it doesn't feel like he has to get the point yeah, back, you yeah. know. That's gone now to get away with it. But now he's taking big shots. To climb into that right hook, leans in, a nod between the two of them. That's a 10 8 round. Down, even though he went down from the, the straight left down. Yeah, the, the knockdown was just a good, straight, yeah. accurate yeah. shot, and he was a bit square, but. It's just a flash knockdown. Yeah, flash knockdown, but the, some of the shots after that, were, there was more weight behind them, yeah. the uppercuts and the, the hooks. I think the key now for Parker, he doesn't panic or get too, uh, you know, let it bother him too much. Just forget about it now. That round's over. Corners, 10 That's seconds. not before the knockdown, and we Second talked about how good his boxing goal. mechanics are. And he just turns at the waist and slides that left hand out. Effortless left hand that was. Absolutely, absolutely. And now he's going to cut an even more imposing figure now. And this is where Parker can't panic. No, but he is going to feel under more pressure yeah. now, Parker, isn't he? There's a touch of damage to the bridge of the nose, around the bridge of the nose of Parker. I'd like to see him start moving towards his left a little bit more, rather than just constantly walking onto that left hand. It was a good left hand again a few seconds ago from Zhang. Parker trying to come back with a left of his own, but this power is real from Zhang. It's that kind of taser-like cackle prod power where wherever it hits you, you feel it. Another. Straight left hand got through, Zhang looking to try and throw that right hook, he's going looking for Parker a bit now. Yeah, it's getting tough in there for Joseph Parker. I think, looking at, looking at Parker, it seems like there's, is that, it was that concerned about the right hook, that's why he's moving away from the right hook all the time, but he's moving up to the left hand. Chan looking for the uppercut, couldn't quite thread it through. Midway through round four. I think Parker's waiting a little bit too long at times. Yeah, I think he's got to let his own hands go a bit yeah, more like that's that. That's a good shot. Two good shots. The right hand to the body as well, really drive that in. Yeah. Because as we've said, Parker's a good body puncher. Snappy combination from the former WBO champion. He's got to chip away at uh, Zhang because there you go. You see the right hand underneath, right in the belly. There, and again, there and again. Well, the referee just having a quick word about potential low blow there, but he's just gone up to the head with the left hand, a distraction more than anything else, and then twice has just rammed that right fist into the pit of Zhang's stomach. And that's decent again from Parker, the right hand just moved 
the Chinese fighter, causes him to take a step off to his right hand side. And Parker is responding well here. Yeah, this is much better for Parker. Instead of waiting on yeah. Zhang, you go out there and make it happen yourself. Let your shots go focus on your offense, your game plan. Don't, you know, and there was times there he was just waiting a yeah. little bit on Zhang. But too after, long. He's, after he's done his work, then go for a walk. Make Zhang have to chase you and move his feet to get you. Again, good shots. This is good work for Parker. <laughs> I didn't think that was low. Well, the referee is having a, a quick word with him about it. You look at the belt line of the two fighters there. The belt line is where it should be, so the top of the belt is lined up with the top of the protector, so the belt sitting on the protector, so anything on the belt, Michael Alexander will deem to be an illegal blow. We went through all of this and infinitum at the end of last August, of course, but that was a good finish to the round, a good second. Yeah, hard shots getting through, see the damage on the nose. He's heavy handed, he's strong, he's yeah. very heavy, but you know, Parker, the keeper Parker, his movement, his work rate, take him into the second half, fitness, you know, keep him moving, keep him flinching, yeah. keep him resetting, drain the energy out of Zhang. You, know, you, you don't want to stand there and, and trade with him. Get your shots up, man. So the scoring with those could go any which way, really. Round three was a 10 8 round for. Zhang and that fourth round, Zhang started it well, but Parker did a lot of good work in the second half. Just stooping, looking for that left hook over the top almost there, Parker. Good left hook underneath. If Zhang pokes that jab out slow, that's what Parker should be doing. He's flicking and firing that left hook underneath. Andy Lee in the corner liking the face. He was just tapping with the jab and dipping that front foot in and out. Parker looking for that right hand. Jack was slightly too close to him. He strangled it a touch. Looking to try and go up and down with the jab. Good right hand underneath. And in the round where not very much was happening in that opening 80 seconds, Parker just trying to take a little bit of the initiative there. Rounds like this where there isn't much going on, if you can just do enough to put these in your pocket, if you're Parker particularly in the first half of the fight, that's absolutely what you want to do. Definitely trying to nick the round and, and, and also get a bit of a rest as well. And that's what he's doing in this round so far, Parker, because he's just the busier of the two. 45 seconds remaining in it yet, though. Yeah, he's doing more, so he's winning the round, but he's not doing so much more that he's burning unnecessary energy. You know, you're only, you're only going to win the round 10 9. What he's done a good job of this round is stopping the Zhang jab. Oh, shot. Again, looking for that left hook, dipping off to his right-hand side, getting underneath the shoulder almost as he throws it. Yeah, also maybe Zhang's having a slower round, yeah. just conserving a bit of thought. But a good round there, have a bit of a slower round now. He knows that this is could be a 12-round fight. Sharp. Nice right-hand counter there from Parker. As Zhang overreached with the left. A little bit of excess water in the corner. I think Parker's had a good, the last two rounds, round and a half. Have been really good for Parker. It's a good jab there from Chang. It doesn't travel very far. But you can tell just by the way it lands, it knocks the head back. To be honest, none of his none of his punches uh, travel that far. He's very uh, he doesn't telegraph them at all, does he? he? Just places them. 
Again, Parker looking for that left. It's similar to the right hand that he threw against Wilder. Gets really low when he throws it, comes straight in behind it. And as I said previously, it makes it very, very difficult to counter. It's a shot to nothing almost if there is such a thing against fighters this dangerous. Parker has adjusted really well. You think about the first, you know, the first couple of rounds, the second and third round, I think it was. Um, he was getting touched for the jab all the time. He was getting nailed with that left hand. How many times? The last couple of rounds, he's, he's not the left hand. Touch forward, the left hand's not been landing at all, and he's took away the, the Zhang jab. Zhang just overbalancing a bit there as he looked to try and let the one-two go. Right hand from Parker connected with the chest. There's that jab from Zhang. The pace just increasing slightly in the last 10 seconds or so. Right hand from Parker then just rolled away and got underneath the combination from Zhang. Interesting in a situation like that where they're kind of leaning on each other. Zhang doesn't really oppose himself no. in the way that a 21 stone fighter you'd think would. He's happy enough just to back off or let the referee get involved and, and split them up. And in those moments, because Zhang's not doing anything, Park could drive in a couple of good little hooks underneath. When you get up close with somebody as big as that, if they're not going to do any work, if they're not going to pose themselves, you've got to pinch those shots in there. So midway through this one, very real. We spoke to Tyson Fury during the week, the three of us, didn't we? And he said the one thing that he does know about Ngannou is that he hit him flush with the right hand and with an elbow, and he didn't even blink. The chin is solid. Into the second half of this one, and halfway, it may well be Joseph Parker with his nose in front here. There was a 10 8 in the third round for Jile Zhang, the first two rounds. For a little bit of a phony war, a slight non event, but rounds four, five, and six, you could well have gone his way. Four was quite tight because Zhang started well, Parker finished strong, so it's a close fight, basically, is what I'm saying. Yeah, definitely. There's, there won't be a lot in this round either. Yeah, those scorecards there, that's probably right. Two drawn rounds in the first two, a couple of 10-10s, it's difficult to argue with that, the 10-8 in the third, and then Parker 4, 5 and 6. Could be the other way around. If you go Zhang's way in round four. As I say, he did start it strongly, and there is always a temptation to remember more clearly what the fighter who dominated the closing stages of a round did, but it's whip and tuck at this stage. Parker has found a good rhythm, though. Yeah, definitely, and I, and I think they would have, you know, if they, had, if they were equal even a round down, but the, at the halfway stage, they'd have been happy with that coming into the fight, so you'd have to say, team, Parker, they're happy with how the fight's going. He did feel a little bit of a left hand there, Parker, I think, a few seconds ago. Jan just snaked it through. I was just about to say, a couple of times he's dipped into that right, right side this round and he's been caught twice with the left hand. He doesn't want to get into that where, where Zhang starts getting confident again. The weight of Zhang's punches are going to take an effect. Jack himself here is being patient, as you said, Matt, in round five. It could be a case that Zhang was happy to take a little bit of a round off because he knows that he's probably in for a long job here and he wants to leave some dynamite to be detonated in the second half. Yeah, well, stamina hasn't been his best asset for his career, so you know, pacing the fight, 
uh, is something that he, he's learned to do better. And yeah, he had, when he had Parker down, when he got up, he put it on him a little bit. But then once he realised no Parker's head is clear, he eased back up. But he, he will be having the odd round off. But it, again, he'll be conscious of the scorecards too, so he won't want to be letting Parker build up or get back. You know, he'll be the, the both corners will be keeping an eye on the scorecards. Been a good round for Zank this time. Yeah, just pokes through another left hand. He's making Parker work hard here. Yeah. mystery around him, Francis and Gardu, and that can be a very valuable thing. Oh, oh shot there from Parker. A solid, solid shot, but Jang just seemed to eat it up and then looked to let his own left hand go, but you could see the impact that had on Jang. It made his whole frame shudder. He almost bluffed it because he threw a couple of shots over. He ended up being over the top of Parker. Definitely registered on his legs. Jang trying to chop down with that left hand. Parker again, just getting low. Parker's picking some nice shots. I like him to switch back downstairs to the body again with that right hand as well. The head movement of Parker, bringing praise from Andy Lee in the corner there. And he's not moving his head extravagantly but he's doing it just enough just taking it off that center line just dipping his knees every now and again varying the height of it rolls out to his right hand side there every now and again he'll dip really low and try and fling that left hand over the top he's made himself a difficult target a left hand followed by a right landed there for Zhang he looks at the corner there Parker Clear eyed again, but just as I was saying, he was making himself a difficult target. Zhang punching down as Parker dipped, I think, landed a couple, and they were heavy enough to put him down to a knee. Yeah, got caught with a chocolate right hand. Yeah, just, on, just above the ear, wasn't it? Yeah. Did it again? It didn't look like much, but it's the weight of the shot, the sheer weight of the shot. Now, it's important again that he doesn't take much punishment now for the rest of this round. Heading into the final minute, and if it stays as it is, and this will be a 10 8 round in Zhang's favour. Another one, he's had one already, remember. Outside of that, Parker was probably doing the better work, but the knockdown is extremely significant. He is dangerous every single second, Jilei Zhang. Parker's just tripped off the body a little bit. Good right hand, good left hook to the body. Just as I was saying, he's kind of gone off the body, got away from the body shots a little bit. That you know, was better. You know when Zhang, as soon as he punches, he's not going to punch again straight away. Parker should go straight back at him. was rolling and the right hand just clipped him on the back of the head and that was enough to send him down to a knee someone clipping you with a sledge um, <laughs> yeah, sledgehammer Parker's got to keep that head movement. It doesn't have to be big, but just keep it mobile so we you know can go left, right, come under. And, and it just and keep the feints going as well. Don't be cut, don't let uh can't, you've got to he's got to keep um, Zhang thinking about what's coming back, little feints, make him offset, reset, come again, keep him turning. Can't become a stationary target. Oh, 
sharp one two for Parker. Let's go, Let's go. I'd like see Parker go, go back down to the body shots a bit as well. And also again, once he's once he's fired his shots, change angle. Make Zang have to move his feet in order to in order to put him down. Again, that'll tire his legs out. This is better work. Short straight left hand about 20 seconds ago from Zhang. Again, it travels absolutely no distance whatsoever, but you can just see the the sweat fly off the face of Parker. Midway through the round. It's an absorbing fight, this, because it's just so difficult to know which way this will go. Parker was maybe inching ahead, but then there's a 10-8 a round, which would just haul that back. The scoring of those opening two rounds could be quite important, actually, if it continues in this vein until the end. An opening two rounds where really very little happened. Oh, shot. They're horrible shots then. Just, just skip your ribs. Good shot for Parker. Solid right hand lead almost and again there. The first one got through more cleanly than the second. When he lands those shots, he's got to roll his head and come out as well. He doesn't want to stand there admiring his work. He did well to disentangle himself there, Parker, because just for a second, Zhang was leaning down on him and he was in danger of an uppercut and he knew it final few seconds of the round busier landing the better shots second down round 10 to the 10, Xile Zhang in the gold shorts. Joseph Parker in the predominantly black skirt design with the black gloves. The two exchanging on the inside. That kind of situation is a little bit more dangerous for Parker than for Zhang, you would say, but neither one of them really made clean contact. You know, this is where Joseph Parker's team wanted to be. You know, cup round 10 here, fighting the balance. They felt their man's the, the better conditioned athlete. This is where he needs to kind of push on and make that uh, extra fitness count. Combination there from Parker. Nice quick hands, not too much on the right hand into the body there, but a couple of them landed. Those shots that he drives up into the body. He's very, very good at it. He drives them upwards. He's not, he's not done really enough in this fight for me. Obviously, there's the two 10-8 rounds as well. Yeah. <laughs> he's got to be careful, but he's, he's still got to work more. He's got to win the rounds here because, like you say, he's got a lot of these rounds are close and there's the two 10-8 rounds. This is better. Decent combination again there from Parker. Zhang looks calm. I still think he should mix his attacks up head and body. Zhang just inching forward, trying to keep that guard high. Parker just baiting the jab up top and then looked like he would go to the body. Zhang tried to cover it. He's in range there, Zhang, but he's just reluctant really to let his hands go, just pecking with the jab. And that's because of Parker faints. He's falling for the faints. Doubles up on the jab. To try and launch that right hand. As you said, Dave, there are a lot of close rounds on this card. 
and there's the two 10-8 rounds for Zhang, but you just do feel, don't you, that he, he needs to do more here, the Chinese fighter. There's yeah. no panic in him. He's sticking to the method, but there's two rounds to go after this, and at the minute, in that round, Parker is a busier fighter. Andy Lee, you're in the right advice there. You know, the first 30 seconds, even the first minute of each round, he's had the rest, Jack. It, that's when he's dangerous, but then he gets tired again as you, as you go into the second half. And when he starts letting his shots go, flow, change an angle, flow, let it go again, let it go again, let it go again, then he's going to win the rounds clearly. When you look at the reddening on the cheekbone there underneath the right eye of Zhang, that's testament to the jab of Joseph Parker. And there he goes, just slides it in round the back of the guard, and again there. You've got to remember now we're in the stage of the fight where Zhang, he'll be feeling the pace, but that means that his, his reactions will be slower. Bangs his gloves together there, Zhang. Another good jab from Parker. This time just sets his feet a bit more for the for the one-two. And the things keep going in this vein. Then you would say that Parker is going to win this fight and will have pulled off another extremely good job of neutralising a huge puncher, even though he has been down a couple of times, he's not been badly hurt. Now, see that big breath? You can see that you should have stabbed him straight into the pit of the stomach. Right hand from Parker landed. Jack looked to try and come back with a left, but by the time he let it go, Parker had disappeared. Controlling the rounds beautifully now. Zhang needs to get, get his feet into a certain position. He knows when he's in range and get his feet set, but Parker only has to take that away, boy. Little half a step out and he's got to come again. Half a step back, give a feint, move, and then all of a sudden, Zhang's just struggling, isn't he, to get his feet yeah. into a position where he can punch and hit Parker. But he's struggling with, with Parker's feints as well. Even when Parker's not shooting, the feint as a defensive move will work and stopping from Zhang from punching. Heading into the final minute of round 11. Parker just needs to keep doing what he's doing here. The corner before the start of the 12th round. If this round continues as it has been, have surely got to tell Zhang that he'll have to go out there and let his hands go. Right hand there for Parker. He shrugs Zhang, but that's a scoring shot. OK, it didn't hurt him, but it was an accurate, clean punch. Very easy for the judges to see. Going to the last 30 seconds of the round now. This is where Parker's going to put a few combinations together just to really catch the eye of the judges. Just to rubber stamp it, basically. Exactly. It'd be very handy if we could get into that Jan corner and see what they're saying before. So I was, I was trying to read yeah. the body language of the corner, man, and they were saying he's got to go, he's got to go. Second zone. 12th and final round. So I think they feel they might need a knock, knock out or certainly knock down. And I would concur with that. I would agree with that. Parker will look to be positive in this round as he has been throughout the fight. He will stick to his method. He's just got to make sure that at no stage does he get greedy here. A couple of points in it on the viewer's verdict. And I wouldn't argue with that. I wouldn't argue with that. He responded really well to the knockdown. 9, 10 and 11, they were park rounds. 3, 10, 10 rounds there. So interestingly, you know, whatever way the judges, if they don't go 10, 10, they go 10, which way do they go 10, 9? So you could see a very different card then. Yeah, of course, if, if, if all of those rounds went to Zhang, then, then he's ahead. It's, it's as simple as that. And, and there have been a lot of close rounds. There have been. And he's got those two 10 eights. But again, we used this analogy earlier on. And if I had to pick one of these two that I would like to be heading up for this final round, I would rather be Parker. And you know that Zhang's not got much left in him at all because he knows he's got to go out there and, and get rid of him. And he's, he's not pulling the trigger. A 
dropping right hand there from Parker. Well, you're right, Dave, considering Zhang's corner said you need to go out there and get him out. He hasn't really made no, much, you know, he's tired, isn't he? Yeah. He's not able to do it. That's when your brain, your brain's telling you what to do, your body just can't do it. That comes with age as well. <laughs> when, when you're old, when you're in your 40s, you know, you, you know what to do, you just can't pull the trigger. Now you find yourself from round 12, it just makes it even harder. The real high point of the fight came for him at the end of the third round, first half of the fourth. He yes. put him down with that straight left hand at the end of the third, then started to get through a nice uppercut right hand towards the conclusion of that round. Started the fourth well, then Parker provided a response, and since then, honestly, apart from that knockout later on in the fight, which did occur in isolation, really, he's not done much. Not at all. And this is good work again for Parker. Joseph Parker. Yeah, Parker's Close winning sure. this final round. But you have to give Parker the credit for that. Again, he's come up with a very efficient game plan. He's grown so much as a fighter these past few years, he really has. I, I make the, if he gets the decision here, Parker, I make this a better win than the Wilder one. Yeah. You know, Wilder had one round in two years, but Zhang's on four. He's on a roll, definitely. Final few seconds. Looks for the hook there, Parker. Sits down and slots in that right hand. There goes the bell. A shrug there from Jilei Zhang. I think he knows that the writing is on the wall here. And he leaves. Strides confidently out from the corner to shake hands with his opposite number, Sean George. And Joseph Parker has surely done it again. go to the scorecards on the line, the interim WBO heavyweight championship. Zoltan Enyedi scores the contest. 113, 113, he has it even. Steve Gray has it 114, 112. Patrick Marley, 115, 111. To the winner, by majority decision, 
and new WBO interim heavyweight Joseph Parker gets it by majority decision. Steve Gray 114, 112, which translates as eight rounds to four in favour of Joseph Parker. Patrick Morley 115, 111, which 